Turkey's former Prime Minister. Now President Erdogan and President Assad were close allies before the Syrian unrest sparked, but Ankara was quick to turn its back on Damascus. Turkey has reportedly been arming and providing refuge to some Syrian rebel forces since 2011. Joining us live now from London is journalist and activist Sukhant Chan Dan. Thanks indeed for joining us. Is Ankara still backing the anti-Assad insurgency as strongly as ever? I think it is. All indicators point to that, that being the case. If we see the obvious uh, deal that was done with the so-called Islamic State, perhaps un-Islamic State, uh, with the 50-odd consulate staff from Mosul of the, of the Turks, it was very clear that the Turkish state has done a deal with the death squads uh, hold, holding that consulate staff. If we understand that 12,000 uh, so-called jihadis, these are not jihadis, these are death squad members, some of which have gone from London and England and, and France and Belgium, has gone through the Turkish-Syrian border, and nothing could be clearer. While Turkey facilitates uh, the death squads going into Syria to overthrow a sovereign government, at the same time they are stopping Kurds going to defend their compatriots across the border on the Syrian side. So really the whole situation is very clear and this is a strategy that is, is part and parcel and in, in harmony and synchronization and coordination with the leading NATO powers, especially France, Britain, the United States, to develop the circumstances for bombing Syria, not to confront the, the, the so-called uh, Islamic State because they've been facilitating their rise there, but to actually have a strategy in place to bomb the Syrian Arab army and the Syrian government because they really want to finish the job, but that remains to be seen whether that can be possible. But what about the logistics even of the whole thing? Is Turkey in a position to deal with such a massive influx of refugees currently? Well, Turkey has to really deal with uh, it's, it, the fallout of its own policy. If you're going to conduct war and terrorism, state-sponsored, Turkish state-sponsored terrorism against your neighbour, which you had hitherto been an ally of, then you're going to have to deal with some of the fallout. Now, obviously, Turkey has a long-standing intergenerational policy, actually, of, of, of anti-Kurdish policy, wiping out tens of thousands of villages in the late 90s in the Kurdish area of, of, of Turkey. So this is nothing new. And, and Turkey will use the death squads in Syria to then come across the border into Turkey to help uh, uh, fight its own internal enemy. That's the Kurdish Workers' Party and the other Kurdish revolutionary and uh, liberation organizations. So this is a continuation and an intensification of not only Turkish policy, which uh, some, uh, um, some Kurdish media correctly called the neo-Ottoman strategy of developing paramilitaries, i.e. the death squads, but this is an ongoing policy of the leading NATO powers to overthrow what one leading United States uh, 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 policy maker called uh, the Cuba of the Middle East, i.e. the Syrian Arab Republic. Okay, now a, a number of top US officials say there's no way to avoid a ground operation if Washington and its allies want to defeat Islamic State. Why is the US government therefore objecting to that? Well, I think it doesn't need to really put any ground truths because frankly, on all strategic issues, in, in, in any way you look at it, what's developing in Iraq and Syria is to the strategic benefit of the leading NATO powers and its allies, the Zionist settler state of Israel and the Gulf monarchies. So there's, there's no reason. That's why they have the quote unquote pivot to Asia, because for, for the West in general, everything since that, especially the, uh, the onset of the Arab sting, has been going perfectly well for Western strategic interests. So why, 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 why state in the media you're going to put uh, uh, boots on the ground? And anyway, there's, it, it, there's obviously uh, military intelligence and boots on the ground uh, in Syria, in Iraq, that have infiltrated and guiding and, uh, and directing the death squads as they have been doing so in Libya since February 2011. Live from London, journalist and activist Sukhan Chandan, thank you.